Right, so today what I've done is I've broken out the computer blackboard and what I want to go over is how do we calculate the Lambert W function in a spreadsheet. So let's get started with this. What we'll do, what we'd like to do is calculate something like Lambert W of 3. And let's just say that's going to equal to X. And just notice that we could rewrite this a little different. We could write our x, and then we could write our x as Lambert W, x e to the x. This is just our most favorite formula we have for Lambert W function. And so if we do that and we say this piece equals this piece, then we can just relate the inside and we can say 3 equals x e to the x. And that kind of gives us the insight that we're looking for as to what we're trying to calculate. We're trying to say, what values would we, what values of x would we need to put in here in order to get back a three? And conveniently, this is not too hard to get some estimate, right? Because if we put in, like, if you put in a one, we know e is about 2.718. So if we have one times e to the one, we just have e, and that's 2.718. So we get the idea that to get to three, we're going to be somewhere around one. I mean, it's going to be a little, we it's going to be a little greater than one, but let's take one as a starting point. And that's all we need is just a ballpark estimation. This is actually more than good enough to say x is about 1. And then what we're going to use is some numerical methods. And all the estimation, particularly we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to use Newton's method. But with any of these kind of numerical methods, it's always got the same format where we're going to have something like we want to find an x. We have some initial guess or some value we're working from. And then we're going to have some error value. Okay, so some difference. So like, we're gonna start with our one, which is our guess. And then we're just gonna keep adjusting that over and over again with some error. Like, what I'm doing is just kind of a very rough way, like how these estimations work. So like, just to get a feel, just get a like intuition for it. If we start with our initial value of one, let's just say our error is uh, 0.01. And just adding that together, our X is, 1.01 .01. and then we're just going to repeat this again so then the second time through our x value is going to be 1.01 .01. we're going to find some error value again let's say but it's not going to be the same error value or it can be but it's it's really going to be whatever comes up whatever our error function produces so let's just say it's like minus zero 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 two three or whatever and then so we have this 1.01 .01. I shouldn't have made this so hard for myself. 1.01023. 1, 1, and then we just repeat it again and again and again. So like the next line down, we're using this value and then we get another error value. And then you could do it 10 times. The more times you do it, the more accuracy. But what I found for the Lambert W function, we, if we do it 10 times, it's gonna be more than enough accuracy for anything that I wanna use. So this is great, but this is kind of very general. So we want to know, how do we actually find this error piece? Because this is the real key to this, because otherwise we're just kind of guessing. And so what we have for this is Newton's method. And what it actually tells us is that this error that we're going to be using is actually going to be minus f of x over f prime of x, f prime being the derivative. And so this is actually not too bad, because we can find, we have our function, and we can find the derivative of this function. And so with that, we have really everything we need. So let's kind of go over the specifics of Newton's method. Okay, so back to our problem we want to solve. We want to find out what is the, Lam the Lambert W of 3. And then we just rewrote it into this form where it's going to be more um, useful for our calculation. But then even more useful, we want to turn this into a function. So let's get it all on one side of the equation. We'll just subtract 3 from both sides. And we have our function x e to the x. Uh, minus three and this is because again we want we need f of x our function and we need the derivative of that function for newton's method so then we can easily find the derivative of this the derivative as well so we'll just use the um the product rule on this so we'll take the derivative of the first one derivative of x is one e to the x plus we'll keep our x and then take the derivative of e to the x which is just e to the x and the derivative of minus three is zero, so we'll just ignore that. And so what I'm gonna do for our derivative, I'm just gonna actually factor out an e to the x. So then putting this all together for setting this up for Newton's method, we've got an x that we wanna find. We have 
some guess or like our previous value. So we have like our x to the n. This is kind of like a temporary value, okay, that we're going to adjust with some error. But the error we know from what Newton did, and we're not going into like why or how or anything like that. We're just going to trust Newton on this one and say, we'll trust that Newton knows what he's doing. So then for, for just this once. Um, so we've got our f of x in the numerator, and then in the denominator, the derivative, e to the x, x plus 1. And so that's actually our complete formula. And we have, like, we said that our, this is actually our x0, our initial guess is going to be 1. And so what all we, all we have, now we have a formula, and we can calculate each of these things, right? We can plug in values. So you can actually do this with your calculator. Well, you can actually do this with, like, your just any calculator and just keep, typing all this stuff in and calculating, calculating, calculating. That's going to be really tedious. <laughs> um, you may have a better calculator that allows you to do like repetitive calculations. Uh, I don't, I don't actually know how to do that because I don't have like a fancy calculator, but yeah, you could probably do that. But my way was to do it with a spreadsheet actually on the website. I also do this as well, but I just do it like in JavaScript, but that's going to be hard for me to show you guys. So what I want to do is show this process in a spreadsheet. Okay, so what I've done is I've opened up Google Sheets. You could use Excel or any spreadsheet program, basically, that has, um, you know, the basic function. So we're using Google Sheets, and we'll just call this Lambert W. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to actually try to follow the things that we just went over. We came up with this nice formula, so we're just actually going to replicate that in the spreadsheet. And so what we'll do with the first example, we'll calculate, we wanted to calculate the Lambert W of three. So in my first, we'll do, this will be our input value. This is the thing, we, this is our three. So we want to calculate three. And so, but at what's going to happen is you can put any value you want in here for this calculation. So we'll start there. Then we notice we needed our X to the N value. I'm just, I don't really care, we'll just do subscript like this. So this is our, what we wanted as our initial guess. So we're, we're guessing one to start. Okay, so x to the n will be our starting value. And then the other value we need was we needed our f of x. That's actually, we're, we're going to be using the x to the n value, so we'll call it f of x n, x sub n. And then so that was, what was that again? So that was our f of x is, okay, this piece here, which is x e to the x minus 3. Okay, so to do that, Let's see, we'll do, this is our x, okay, times, for e we say exponential function, so e to the x again, minus our start value, 3. Okay, and we get an initial x value. Then for our derivative, that was a little more complicated. What was our derivative again? We found our derivative to be e to, not too much more complicated, really e to the x times x plus 1. So we'll write this f prime, x sub n. Oh, why am I not? I should zoom in so you guys can see. This is probably too small. Yeah, that's important that you guys see. OK, so then for our derivative, again, we have e to the x times x plus 1. So um, let's just do our x plus 1 first. So x plus 1, and for that, we're going to want e to the x that we want. Exponential function, here's our x times x again, which is our b plus 1. And that's going to be our derivative value. And then what I'm going to do is I want to calculate all this to get our new value. Because like, go back, we are plugging in. We got, we, we got all our values. We got our x to the n. We got our f of x function in the numerator here. We have our um, derivative in the denominator. And then what's the thing we're calculating? We're calculating our next x value. So I can, I'll just call this x sub n plus 1. And then we're just going to kind of, this is going to be our full formula. It's going to be sub n minus this piece, which is our f of x divided by our derivative. OK, oh, and, so, and that's kind of cool because we said we start with 1 as our estimate. And we're like, it's probably going to be, we know it has to be higher because e is 2.718. And so as our initial estimate for a better answer than 1, we get 1.0518. Now, one thing I want to do, oh, you know, one thing I should mention for our initial guess, let's just do these little, 
dollar signs, which means it's going to take exactly this cell. So we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to copy it down. It's going to want to, we could copy the threes all the way down, but by using the dollar signs, it means go to that exact cell and it's not going to adjust it. So it's a little spreadsheet trick. I don't know. And then I think the only other thing I need to do when we copy this down, I think see, I think this column, this column, and this column are going to be fine. But what we need is we need what we need to do is so we we calculate this one point oh five one eight. We need this value to become our new x sub n for the next time. We'll start with that one point oh five. Now this is our best guess, but then we're going to approve it with our error again, which is all this stuff is how we calculate our error with C and D to get another value that's hopefully going to be a little bit better. So let's copy down one row and see what that looks like. And so there you see we get 1.0499 and that should be a little closer. And what we can do is now it's easy because we have our whole formula set up. And so we just copy it down and let's get like 20 iterations or whatever. And you'll see that it really narrows it down. And you see, it's that it, we really don't need like, like actually at three, we're already there at a pretty good answer, 1.0499095. Now what I thought we could do is we could actually check this on Wolfram Alpha and see how close are we, how, how good is this answer? So now we're at Wolfram Alpha, the way we're gonna check for the Lambert W3, we'll just type in product log, that's how they, that's how you get Lambert W, and we'll say product log of three, and we'll get an estimate, 1.0499089, or nine. So we get we're we're cut off at five. I wonder no, it doesn't gonna whatever. We could probably get more decimal places. But yeah, so we match to what the precision we have here. It's just we have a five and they have a four nine. So I would say this worked pretty well. So let's check one more value. This is pretty interesting. So we could do minus one over three. So it's minus so it's zero point three three three. And for our estimate, let's just use the same value because things get pretty tight um, down in that area around zero. And we have our estimate of minus 0 0.61906. Now, let's look at what Wolfram Alpha, Wolfram Alpha has for this as well. So we'll do minus one over three. Okay, minus, same thing, or close, minus, six, minus 0 0.61906. Now, the interesting thing here is Let's go back to our graph. Okay, so now looking at the graph, we're looking at the graph of the Lambert W function in red. And we see an interesting thing. So when we were calculating these positive values, we noticed we only had one real solution. And if we're like out here at three, I think there's kind of our solution around one. But then here, this other line is at minus one third. Here's the solution we just found, minus 0 0.619. But then if we zoom in close, we see we actually have another solution right here. Okay, we have this minus 1.5. Now in Wolfram Alpha, it's easy to find this. Okay, we can just go here, get our negative one branch, and it's gonna cover that extra value minus 1.512. Okay, see right there, same value. And then, so this is kind of uh, sketchy, but this is kind of what I found. For how can I do the same thing and here, because I'm only getting back one value, how am I going to get my spreadsheet to show me that second value? Well, I don't know if this always works because I was just playing with it, so I don't know. But I think it's going to always work. You'll notice for the, so the second branch, I'm sorry, the negative one branch, it starts at here, negative one south all the way down here. So for my guess, I choose my guess. I mean, it doesn't have to be close, but I mean, if I get my guess, below minus one, it's not gonna find this other value, it's gonna find the other, this value. Let's just see if that works. For our minus, instead of having our estimate be minus a third, let's guess minus two. And there, it actually converges to that minus one branch that we want, minus 1.512, the same value that they had. Hopefully that helped, and you guys, if you'd like, you can try this out, create your own spreadsheet or your own way to Approximate the Lambert W function.